Hello, my name is David Ruggero. I'm a professor at the Helen Diller Cancer Center at University of California, San Francisco. And today, with uh, like a postdoc uh, in uh, my lab, Don Kahneman, we will tell you like uh, a new story that we develop in the lab. And this story is like center on understanding how the regulation of cell biomass or cell growth can be an important determinant for cancer uh, progression. Indeed, the normal cells, like uh, they grow in their size, uh, and uh, through like an increase uh, in, of course, in the balance metabolism and uh, associated with the production of different micro micromolecules such as DNA, RNA, and protein. And this is important, it's a very well balanced process to define uh, like a very fixed number of cell division. Cancer cells, uh, instead, uh, they have an uncontrolled growth, an uncontrolled increase in metabolism associated with a rapid uh, increase in this macromolecule. And this is associated with, in fact, in the definitive proliferation. Another way of view of uh, the cell growth uh, and what can be inside of uh, like uh, in a cancer cell is uh, this visualization that we call cancer cell biomass universe, where each node of this constellation represents the constituents of the cancer cell biomass. It is important to understand that each of these constituents then needs to be coordinated in order like to increase the overall cell biomass. And we want to uh, address the question of how two fundamental processes constituting the, sense the cell biomass universe, protein synthesis and metabolism may be coordinated. And we want to understand what can be the link because we hypothesize that this link can be a point of vulnerability of the cancer cells versus normal cells. We address this question downstream in a very important oncogene known as MIC. It's a transcription factor that regulates many target genes in the genome. Two class of target genes that MIC predominant regulate are involved in protein synthesis and metabolism. Therefore, this is, was the perfect tool for us to address our uh, hypothesis how metabolism and protein biosynthesis can be regulated in the cancer cell growth. We perform an unbiased approach uh, employing proton NMR uh, profiling. And uh, what uh, we discover, uh, in fact, that uh, restoring to normal level uh, protein synthesis downstream MIC was affecting specifically a uh, metabolic pathway associated with the nucleotide production that is representing this uh, heat map whether uh, like uh, red square represent increase in the metabolites that are, in fact are more in the MIC and are restored to normal level represented here by like white of the blue square in the mu mycl 24 heterozygous where protein synthesis is back to wild type. Therefore, this is, was the first observation for us to link protein synthesis and a specific metabolic pathway associated with nucleotide production. Because nucleotide metabolism and protein synthesis were intimately linked downstream of oncogenic activation in MYC, we hypothesized that a particular gene or genes may be regulated at the translational level, and that could provide the particular link connecting these two fundamental cellular processes. Therefore, we conducted a candidate gene approach to identify what may be the putative translationally regulated gene downstream of MYC. We therefore measured mRNA abundance and protein abundance of key regulators of the nucleotide biosynthesis pathway. Strikingly, we find that only one enzyme, PRPS2, was regulated in response to MYC and increased levels, and then that lo those levels were restored back to normal levels in the setting of restoring protein synthesis downstream of MYC. PRPS2 is an enzyme that catalyzes this specific enzymatic reaction. It comes in two flavors, PRPS1 and PRPS2. The distinguishing feature is that PRPS1 is acutely sensitive to feedback inhibition by downstream nucleotide production metabolites. Because modulation of PRPS2 levels was sufficient to control the production of nucleotides, we reasoned that PRPS2 may be the fundamental link that connect the two cellular processes of protein synthesis and nucleotide metabolism. We therefore search for the mechanistic basis for this link. We find within the 5' UTR of PRPS2 that it possesses a specific translational control element we've termed the PRTE that distinguishes it from other members of the nucleotide biosynthesis pathway. Mechanistically, MYC, or growth factor stimulation, acts on the key regulated step of translation initiation 
through this protein EIF4E, which binds the 5' cap of mRNAs. Through a mechanism we still don't understand, the PRTE confers sensitivity to EIF4E and allows acute response of PRPS2 translation upon growth factor stimulation. This allows uh, the nucleotides to be produced in an acute manner just through the action of a single enzyme, PRPS2. Therefore, we find that the PRTE could provide a mechanistic link between these two cellular processes of protein synthesis and nucleotide metabolism. To assess the in vivo contribution of PRPS2 in the normal and cancer settings, we generated the very first PRPS2 knockout mice. In the context of oncogene activation, in this case, we cross PRPS2 knockout mice with the EMU-MIC model of lymphoma. We find that PRPS2 is critical for the pro-tumorigenic program. At the cellular level, loss of PRPS2 has very little effect in the normal condition on downstream uh, effectors of the nucleotide biosynthesis, such as DNA, RNA, and protein. However, upon loss of PRPS2 in MIC overexpressing cells, you can see a dramatic decrease in the rate of production of DNA, RNA, and protein, which are all necessary mediators of cell growth and biomass accumulation downstream of MIC. We hope that you can read like uh, our manuscript thanks to the funding source uh, listed here.